Hey guys, how's it going? Another day. Not Sunday yet. It's midweek. And man, it is windy outside today. So, calling the day like 90 kilometer an hour winds to 100. Yeah, just to give you an idea. You can see it all. There's garbage all over the fence. It's recycling day, of course. It has to be one of the windiest days out there. Oh yeah, that's some good stuff. That's enough of that. And not only was it super windy today, uh, there was that huge storm that ran through here up in Canada that came from the southern areas and uh, it rained for 12 hours straight here. So sometimes hard, sometimes light, quite windy. So we're still kind of getting the tail end of that, I guess. It started raining again this morning. So anyways, the whole point of that was that I had most of the day to mess around with this thing. Look, I already knocked it off. So all it is is just a whack of spare pieces was lying around and I started building and uh, I ended up coming up with this thing. I chopped the frame right down, uh, found my body, uh, different axles and uh, Baja tires and that and I got the front end super small. Here I'm going to get back in here. It's uh, a sender front end. Let me get this lid off so get some light in there. Sender front end, and uh, what I did is I just took all the guts out of it, all the gear, ring, and pinion, and uh, now it's just free float, so it's only two wheel drive. Uh, basically, front end is the same. That's actually a JR plate in there I just trimmed and killed. I really did like it and the design of it, but it just anything bigger than this tire. It, it would hit like there was no way I was putting two twos even even the big one nines these are one nines I know they look like one fives but they they're like the smallest ones you can get so what we're looking at now is just the kind of the side of it so I can show you I uh, cut the frame there just chopped it right off I still might do some more modification like I said I just built this yesterday just messing around bolting everything up together and Mitch match and I couldn't put the the shock mounts on the back end so I made my own now when I made that it was all fine and dandy but I had no really hard mounts they're all off those balls so kind of wiggles which I just got to make a cross brace it's more acts more like a rock crawler but what I want this to do is line up on a mud pit as you can see I got the brushless power in there and just go so I've already gave it a couple test runs, you know, because like I said, mix and match. I had that lying around, a couple batteries, JR plate, just an extra frame, uh, tires. I took apart my whole ascender and used it for different pieces, so I found that lying on the floor, the front axle, and I mocked that up. Oh, got the Glenda out now. As you can see, the Glenda has SCX-10. That's because I took them out because I broke the front. And for how much that weighs, really, for what I like to do with it, it the these just can't handle it. They break. The back seem to be good, actually, but the front seem to buckle under the pressure. <clears throat> so, I'll put this back on there. And I think it looks pretty nice and good in scale, actually, as long as it holds. Um, MIP. <clears throat> uh, I got these off a of Buddy, because I had a monster truck, if you've seen some videos, and had two extra ones and actually I took the monster truck apart so they're on there now I think it comes from like a T-Max or an E-Max he said I think I've talked about that before oh waterproof uh, receiver you got the short course edition uh, Sidewinder 3 in here with a 3 cell venom it's all like waterlogged this actually getting a little puffy I gotta it says, everything still says it reads pretty good. Oh, actually, these are really old. These are my first upgraded uh, shocks for my ECX Torment, which is long gone and in pieces everywhere and been given away. But so far, when I gun this thing, it wants to go. So that's about all. I just thought, you know, do a little vid on just stuff. Oh, yeah, the links are... Uh, forgot to say about the links their job uh, just the wraith links and then just some I'm pretty sure these are ascender links these are the ascender links on the front there 
So Wraith links on the back, Cinder links on the front. Oh, and I got some toe links from uh, actually the ECX Torment. That was another thing that I pulled out of there. Got those things lying all over the place. And uh, yeah, I just thought, you know, you might be interested. And uh, there's going to be a couple running vids, hopefully just mound some mud. Oh, and another thing. One more little quick thing. I just want to talk about this thing because my, <laughs> I actually got it from my daughter. And I figured I'm going to steal one of, her, one of her hair pieces here. And what this is, is a hair brand. So, but it's a stretchy one. Has that stretch to it there? But I am saying this. Is the best kinetic bungee ever. Look at that. And it pulls that thing. And that's gotta be like 14 pounds, 13 pounds. Like this this truck weighs a lot. And the first time I ever used it, I was pulling my buddy Sir Trips a lot. It's uh TF2 out, and I thought this thing will snap, or it's the test, and this thing has been going strong. I've pulled tons of trucks out with this. And the best thing about it is there's not that hard yank that rips off bumpers. And it smoothly does it. And it acts just like a kinetic bungee. There you go. Full shot there. So, all I did is just get some little hooks. I use hooks from anything. Any kind of chain I find around. I just make these little hooks there. But mostly it's this, this little piece there. I got some needle and thread. Normally you want or fishing line, you can use fishing line too, anything that's kind of waterproof, a, a thicker line. And you literally just start sewing around and looping it, sewing it around, and make sure it's nice and good. You really don't want to sew through though, you don't want to go through the, the bungee itself, just through the material. If you go through the bungee, it will create a rip and it more than likely is just going to rip off into little pieces every time you do it. So you want to just kind of knit into the material to keep sure that all the all that stays together now that's a little frayed in that but that's actually after a lot of use and a lot of trail time so a lot of bungeeing going on with this thing so yeah i just thought i'd show you this is one of my favorite things i got the beefy rope here let's see if i can show you this sorry yeah, this is going on a bit today i don't really do these so if you like them tell me to do more and if you don't well We'll find out. <laughs> so, there's the, uh, my rope. That's my strong rope. But I find when I tug with this one, it just really yanks on vehicles. And basically, whoever has the heaviest vehicle is going to do the less damage to. And the lighter vehicle is going to normally get yanked and twisted as frame. So, but with this thing, it doesn't normally matter. With this thing, it just slowly kinetics it. And if you go too far, when it finally does reach it, it you slow down by then and it normally launches you back and you can just whip back into it again and you just keep bungeeing. I think I got a couple vids, uh, not too many, but a couple vids with this thing in there. So I hope you like guys and uh, stay tuned for this thing going through the mud, man. How's it going? <laughs>